So what you're telling me is that while we can draw some parallels between S3 and some of the more traditional user-facing storage, it has an interesting architecture because it's flat and it's really designed more for potential sharing and collaboration and for interconnectivity with other types of web apps and services within Amazon and without. Hey, Ryan, tell us a little bit about Amazon Simple Storage Service, or as it's known, S3. Yeah, well, you know, Kelly, S3, it's, it's one of the subservices within AWS. You know, oftentimes I, I like to think of it as somewhat similar from a, a use case perspective to like a traditional file system or, you know, file storage that we might have on-prem. Um, but it's a little bit different in the fact that obviously it's, it's running on cloud infrastructure within an AWS account. Uh, you have buckets to control instead of things like file shares. Uh, we're also looking at more of a, a flat file system as opposed to, you know, a traditional hierarchy that we would see on a, on a file server. Um, and, you know, the access is a little, little bit different too. You know, in addition to just having you know, network access, you can have potentially public exposure as well. So that's interesting. And I think that's maybe a parallel a lot of people will draw is it can be treated somewhat like a traditional file structure. And um, while it is flat, you can sort of simulate a hierarchy. It has the concept of tagging um, as well as prefixes to do some organization. And the, the cool and maybe interesting thing is, and especially as you mentioned, is because it's in the cloud, you can address it and access it in different ways. You can access it through a browser or a lot of times we see it being accessed programmatically through APIs, uh, kind of the, the interconnectedness of all of these different cloud services kind of really comes home with this. So with that in mind, can you walk us through a little bit of the ways that people would typically um, provision access or control access to either the bucket or the objects inside? Yeah, definitely. I mean, last time we talked about the IAM subservice and, you know, we can provision users within an AWS account using IAM and, you know, you can grant IAM users access to a bucket or, you know, you can also control permissions down to the object level within a bucket, you know, the ability to, you know, read or write on one of those files, we might say, or objects within the S3 space. Uh, you also have public controls. So by default, when a bucket's created, they'll give you the option to enforce uh, you know, blocking on public exposure, but you can always turn that off. Um, and oftentimes, you know, we might see people hosting you know, files for access on websites, and that could be stored within a public-facing bucket. So what you're telling me is that while we can draw some parallels between S3 and some of the more traditional user-facing storage, it has an interesting architecture because it's flat and it's really designed more for potential sharing and collaboration and for interconnectivity with other types of web apps and services within Amazon and without. Yep, spot on. Awesome. <laughs> 